Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. Today I am wrapping up October and I know what you're thinking. I can't believe Lacey is doing a wrap up so early and I'm glad you asked. The reason why this is coming so early is that I have motivation in the form of a sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Book of the Month. You might have already heard of them, but in case you haven't, they are a monthly book subscription service. Every month they curate a selection of five new releases in a wide variety of genres. They release them in their special hardcovers. I really like that they try to pick debut authors. They want to introduce new and upcoming authors to their readers. So they work on a monthly credit basis. You buy a credit and you can use it to choose any book you want, any of the five new releases, or even any of the add-ons. You can get your first box for $9.99 using the code COZY and the link in my description. And the best thing about Book of the Month is that you can choose to skip a month if you're not feeling any of the five picks that they've chosen. So you can save and roll over your credit to use the next month. So here are the Book of the Month picks for November. This is The Collective by Alison Galen which is a psychological thriller about a grief-stricken mother who's trying to go after the guy who she thinks is responsible for her daughter's death. The Family by Naomi Kurpitsky, which is historical fiction about two best friends, and it's set in a historical New York City. A Little Hope by Ethan Joella, which is a contemporary fiction debut about a family set in this idyllic Connecticut town. The Keeper of the Night by Kylie Lee Baker, which is a YA fantasy about a half-British Reaper and a half Japanese Shinigami, and How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson, which is the romance pick, and this is my pick. It's been on my TBR since I first heard about it, and I was really glad that Book of the Month chose it for November. It's about a heroine who falls for her best friend while they go on a road trip to stop Keanu Reeves from marrying someone else. And there are also two add-ons this month for November. The first one is Will by Will Smith and Mark Manson, which is a memoir. And my my Body by Emily Radichkowski, which are essays by this model slash actress. A big thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video, and again, you can use the code and link in my description to get your first box. Back to my October wrap-up. This was a pretty good reading month for me. I read a little bit over 35 books, and most of them I did enjoy, though there were a couple of two-star reads here and there, but let's just jump into all the books that I read last month, starting with the first book. Well, actually, the first duet, which is The Naked Fisherman by Jewel E. Ann. I was really excited to see her releasing a book, a duet about an age gap romance. The heroine is an 18 year old and the hero is 10 years older than her. The premise of this duet is really interesting. We have a heroine, Reese, who moves in with her mother all the way across the country. She sees her mother for the first time after her mother was sent to jail and she's trying to reconnect with her, but unfortunately right after Reese arrives, her mother has to leave town. She has some work thing to do. So now Reese is stuck in the house with her new landlord who is a very hot 28 year old. Fisher is not only her new landlord, he is also her new boss. He's friends with her mother and her mother asked him to take her on for the summer. Reese is a really interesting character. She, because her mom was sent to jail, she grew up with her dad and her dad's parents and her grandparents were very religious and very conservative and basically very bigoted. So she grew up in this conservative bigoted way and now that she's living on her own kind of for the first time she's realizing that the way that she grew up wasn't really that okay. Like the perspective that she grew up with was very narrow-minded. I honestly was not expecting all this religion stuff and it does get to be a little much at times but I'm really glad that you know you get to see the slow transformation of Reese's character. The romance was really great. I loved Fisher and Reese together. Fisher is pretty much the first guy that Reese has ever felt all this lust for. So there's all this chemistry and tension between these two, but it's very forbidden because of the age gap and him being her mom's friend. This is the first book in a duet though, so this is just the beginning for Reese and Fisher's romance. It does end on a cliffhanger, which I did not realize. Like, I had no idea this book was part of a duet when I started reading it. But thankfully, the second book did release like two weeks later. So I also read the Lost Fisherman, which I also gave four stars to. It's a sequel, so it's kind of hard to talk about anything without spoiling, but it does take place about five years after the end of book one. So 
Therese is all grown up. She's no longer the very naive and young and experienced version that she was in book one. There are some interesting tropes in this sequel that I did not see coming and I will say if you're not a big fan of other woman drama this sequel may not be for you but I did like the way that this played out. Again I loved how Fisher and Reese together their banter is really cute. It's a really unique duet. Julie Ann always writes the most unique kind of romances and I'm just really glad that these two books released two weeks apart. I read The Day the Jerk Started Falling by Max Monroe which is another sequel. It's the sequel to The Day I Stopped Falling for Jerks. That one I gave three stars to and this one I also gave three stars to. It was okay. It's pretty much a retelling of book one but in the hero Ollie's perspective. So Ollie does his own podcast like the heroine did in book one. He tells their story in a podcast form and luckily we do get to see the big grand gestures at the end of the book, the big reunion, so that was really cute. So the ending was the best for me but otherwise it was just an okay read. I had to read Ash City by Penelope Douglas which is a novella, a very unfortunately very short novella in the Scouts anthology and I love this one. I get five stars. I loved it. I was so devastated when this was only a short novella because I could read about this couple for literally like 300 plus pages. The story and the romance was just so perfect for me. It's a little bit dark, a little bit twisted. We have a bit of an age gap with an older heroine. They met years ago when they were kids and now they're all grown up and the hero is a hired killer. There is one steamy scene here and it was so hot. It was a little bit out there but it was great and it worked for this couple. I just really loved how obsessed the hero was with the heroine. He has been obsessed with her since he first met her when they were younger and I just love to see it. I then read Don't Kiss the Bride by Karen Cole, which I gave four stars to. This is a really great read. It is a modern day marriage of convenience. It's got an 18 year old heroine who is still in high school and a guy who is pretty much twice her age. Thankfully though, I felt zero weirdness between this couple with the age gap because the romance develops really slowly. It's more of a friends to lovers romance. Skylar and Jude first meet when her car breaks down and he offers to help her out. Jude ends up learning more about Skylar and her awful home life. Like Skylar's mom is this hoarder who doesn't take care of her home or Skylar. Skylar is barely able to live in her own house. And Skylar also has an eating disorder that sends her to the hospital and Jude has pretty much had enough of this after seeing all of it and offers this marriage of convenience so that Skylar can live in his home and go under his insurance. Jude is a total sweetheart and I loved how strong Skylar was. Like this girl has been through some rough stuff. They form this really great friendship at first. It's very hands off but then this attraction between them just keeps building and building and it's really great. I really like this one. They made a fantastic couple and I was rooting for them from the very beginning. There was a new Jessica novella so obviously I had to read it. Her new smutty novella. It's Bewitching the Boss which I gave three stars to. This one has an obsessed heroine who stalks the hero. It's not the first time that Jessica has written about a stalker obsessed heroine so I like reading them sometimes. It was all right though. The heroine is this party planner and she gets the hero to hire her as his party planner and he has no idea that she's been stalking him so classic Jessica Kane book but just reversed. I read a new to me author this month. It's Where the Bad Boys Are Ruined by Holly Renee. I didn't really realize this author had been making her rounds through TikTok. I only saw this one because my library got it. My library is mainly the reason why I read so many books. I just get all their audiobooks, read as many of them as I can. So I didn't realize until I started reading this that it was the third book in a series but when I went back to look at the first few blurbs I wasn't all that into them. The first one especially sounded like a book that I would end up hating so I figured I would just skip those two and just continue with this third book and I liked it. I gave it three and a half stars. It wasn't you know amazing or all that unique but still very enjoyable. First I did love that it's a foodie romance. The heroine is 
a bakery owner and Brandon is Charlie's next door neighbor. He is a tattoo shop owner. So it's kind of like a good girl who bakes and a bad boy who tattoos. These two were really sweet together and no pun intended. I really like the way that Charlie was a little bit awkward around Brandon. Like he is this man whore. So she's like, I'm not even going to try with him. And then of course, Brandon ends up getting jealous, a little bit jealous when he sees Charlie going on some dates with other men. So it's your classic bad boy playboy who realizes that he wants more with the heroine. So yes, nothing really special, but I still liked it and I would probably end up reading more from this author. I read another duet this month, The Devil's Playground by Ashley Jade. Book one is The Devil, which I gave three stars to, which is um, a lot lower than I've seen other people rate it. Everyone that I saw on Goodreads was like mind blown by this book, so I expected a lot from it. I expected my mind to be blown because every single review said, what the F did I just read? What was that? I can't believe I just read that. And I mean, yes, it does have its suspenseful and twisted moments, but it wasn't anything that out there, at least not for me. And plus, this is barely a romance. I originally thought that it was going to be like an MMF romance, but it's not. So we have our three main characters, Eden, who is the 18-year-old orphan heroine who is in love with her older stepfather. Kane is that stepfather, and he is a politician who wants to run for president, so obviously trying to get with his stepdaughter is not that great for him. And then we have Damien, who is pretty much the devil in this duet. He has this plan for revenge. And this first book is mainly about the past, about Damien and Kane's past, how they met in high school, and how they started becoming lovers and getting into some twisted things. But again, it just wasn't anything that crazy or out there. I expected a lot more from it. And honestly, I probably could have enjoyed this book more, but I hated Kane's character. He ruined this first book for me. And then of course, I had to read the sequel, The Devil's Advocate, which I liked slightly more. I gave this one three and a half stars. Stars. And I mainly like this one because the bad guy got what was coming for him. And thankfully the romance does pick up a little bit more in this sequel, but it does definitely focus more on the suspense, the revenge. So overall this duet was a little bit suspenseful, a little bit dark, but it wasn't anything that wowed me. It didn't meet any of my expectations from all the hyped reviews, but I am definitely in the minority for this. You might like it more, but this just didn't work for me. October was also when we hosted the Paranormal Romance Readathon and I read four books during that weekend. The first one was Grigory by Lauren Smith, which is a dragon shifter paranormal. I really like this one. I give it four stars. I had a lot of fun reading it. So Grigory is our dragon shifter hero. He is the guardian of his people and that means that when he discovers this human, this human woman who wants to expose his people to the rest of the world, he needs to stop her. But because this is PNR, Madeline instead becomes Grigory's fated mate. It's pretty much your classic fated mates paranormal romance with a an alpha protective possessive hero. I will say the audiobook was really great because I loved Grigory's Russian accent in it. The romance was solid, there's some good action and suspense towards the end of the book, and I mean I just generally love dragon shifter romances anyway, but it was a very solid read, my first read from this author, and I'm definitely continuing with the rest of the series. I read Wicked All Night by Janine Frost, which is the third and final book in the Night Rebel series, and sadly I just didn't love this one as much as the first two books. I gave this one three stars. It was a pretty big letdown, especially for a finale. I'm not gonna say too much about the plot because it builds throughout the series, but we do get this final battle and Ian and Veritas defeat the bad guy, and then the book just ends right there. It is so anticlimactic. We get no epilogue, no getting to see Ian and Veritas happy and in love. It ends at the most abrupt place, which is so sad because Ian and Veritas have been through so much throughout the series and I just really wanted to see them happy. I will say though, I've noticed from all the series that I've read from Janine Frost that her final books are her worst books, at least for me. They are all sadly just a little bit underwhelming. The third book that I read for Paranormal Romance Readathon was Gypsy Blood 
read by Christy Cunning, which is the first book in her All the Pretty Monsters series. So many people told me that I had to read this one after I read and loved the Dark Side series by Christy Cunning. And it was a very solid start to the series. I give it four stars. It's got this really interesting premise. The heroine is a gypsy, so she has magic powers and she's also able to see ghosts. But Violet grew up kind of isolated with her mother, so she doesn't even know that other monstrous creatures exist in her world. But she finally does come across them when she moves to the town where her mother was murdered, where she wants to take over her mother's business. It's a reverse harem with four guys, just like Christy Cunning's other series. I won't say too much about them because we do get to meet the first three guys and the fourth one is kind of a spoiler. There's a little twist to his character, but I will say that they're the leaders of their respective monster race. So we get to know all of our five characters. They all, well most of them get their point of views in this book, but the romance is very very slow to build. Not much happens romantically in this first book. It's definitely a series where the romance builds. I didn't really mind it though because I did like all of our characters. There's also this side character, this ghost that follows Violet around who pretty much becomes Violet's best friend who is hilarious. But I do like this paranormal world. We have vampires, werewolves, monster hunters, succubi, just all sorts of different creatures and it was a very solid book so I am definitely going to continue with the series. And the final book that I read for Paranormal Romance Readathon was The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling. This one is a very light and fluffy paranormal romance. It is very reminiscent of Halloween Town. It was just a really fun book to read during the Halloween season. We've got a second chance romance between two witches. Reese and Vivian fell in love when they were younger but then Reese ends up breaking Vivian's heart and she accidentally curses him when he leaves. They only find out about this curse when Reese comes back to town at least for a little while. Things start to try to kill him and then the entire town becomes cursed so both of them have to try to get rid of this curse. I like this one. I give it four stars. It was a very quick and light read. The romance was sweet and I loved Vivian's family but I was just really here for all the witchy vibes and the whole fall Halloween setting. I finally finished The Shadow in the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout which is the first book in her Flesh and Fire series which is a spin-off of her Blood and Ash series. This book is huge as you can see just like the rest of her fantasy romances. I am so sad though. I did not love this one. I'm giving it three stars. It was okay okay but okay for this author and for these fantasy romances is a pretty big letdown. I love the Blood and Ash series. I mean they're not you know my top favorite fantasy romances but I do enjoy them and this one sadly I just had a hard time getting into. I was really excited because Nykos was introduced in book three in The Crown of Gilded Bones and I was really intrigued by his character. We do get dragons in this book a lot more than the other series and that's definitely a highlight but but I can't say that the story was all that exciting. I couldn't get invested and the romance fell a little bit flat for me. I did not love Sarah or Nykos. I just was not in love with their characters and it felt like this book was mainly a setup for explaining why the Chosen exists, what happens to the Chosen, and even like why the Revenants exist. But I just don't care about that. I just do not need this kind of background. I don't need 600 plus pages of of an explanation for why the Chosen exist. And okay, there is a plot to this as well. We have Sarah who is trying to seduce Nykos in order to kill him, in order to save her kingdom because it's slowly dying, but I just did not find myself invested in any of it. It also felt a little bit repetitive, like very similar to the beginning of From Blood and Ash. And I have to say that the reveal at the end about Sarah was so obvious. I was like, how could you possibly have not figured that out? It was just a little bit too obvious about what was coming about Sarah's character. So that part wasn't all that exciting either. So sadly, as much as I wanted to love this one, I didn't. I read two Serena Bowen books next and they were both so good. I love them. The first one was Lies and Lullabies which I gave four stars to. It is a rock star second chance romance with a surprise baby. So 
all the tropes. It is such a sweet romance, but there is a good amount of angst in there as well. Jonas and Kira connected about five years ago when Jonas was trying to stay undercover, hide from his rock star persona for a little while. Kira had no idea who Jonas was, didn't recognize him, and that was really refreshing for him, so he kept his identity a secret. But then Jonas ended up having to leave and he never contacted Kira again, even though he had her phone number. So uh, this is why he never found out that she got pregnant from their one night. Jonas is now back in town five years later and all he wants to do is see Kira again and reconnect with her. Obviously it is a huge shock when he finds out that he is a father now. He gets mad that he had no idea about this, but honestly he had no one to blame but himself. He was the only one who could have been able to reach out to her. She wasn't able to contact him even though she tried, but thankfully things do start to settle down and sink in and Jonas is trying his very best to not just be a great father to their daughter but also to win at Kira's heart again. I love second chance romances where she's the one that got away and now he's not going to let her get away again. Also if you can I would highly recommend you listen to Lies and Lullabies in audio because they have a song in it. They have Jonas's song for Kira in it and it sounds really nice. And then the other Serena Bowen book that I read was Boyfriend which is a standalone in her Moo University series. So it's a new to college sports romance and it was really great. I adored it. I gave this one four stars. It was so good. I mean it already sounded really good from the blurb. The hero puts himself up for hire as a fake boyfriend for the holidays for Thanksgiving because he wants to avoid his own family. Abby the heroine works at the restaurant that Weston always goes to and that's when she sees the ad and decides to take it. So Abby hires Weston not just because she's got this really big crush on him but she does want to have a buffer between her and her awful stepbrother for the holidays. They end up having this really wonderful time together and they really connect. They start up this fling that they know it won't go anywhere because Weston is completely allergic to relationships. He's your classic hockey player playboy who never wants to settle down until he finally meets the woman that he is falling in love with and wants to settle down. The romance here was so freaking cute. I really liked Weston and Abby. I mean, yes, it plays out exactly the way that you expect it to, but it's still a lot of fun. I also really like that they spend Christmas together. I mean, you could almost call this one a holiday romance because there's Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's just a really cute and silly read and I enjoyed it so much. I ended up reading two Sarah and I books last month, books two and three in her Trophy Boyfriend series, her sports romance series. Book two is called Called Heartfall, which is about the secondary character from book one. I'm not gonna lie, Sarah and I's more recent releases have been more misses for me, but I enjoyed myself with this book so so much. I gave it four stars. This book reminded me a lot of Sarah and I's older releases, which I like a lot more. So this is the second standalone in the series about Trace, and it's got the fake dating trope. Trace and his entire family are hilarious. They were what sold this book for me. They actually made me laugh in this book. Like Trace is a total dork. He was a dork in book one. He's still a dork here, but he grew on me so much. I really like the fake dating aspect. There's also some forbiddenness too, because Hollis is Trace's general manager's daughter. Trace ends up saving her one night at this fancy party by pretending to be her boyfriend and things spiral from there. If you like rom-coms, this one will be very, very entertaining. I sadly did not like book three as much though. Hard Love was another three-star read for me. It was a Okay, the hero is Trip, who is Trace's brother. He's the kind of hero who has a stick up his ass, so his brother loves to mess with him, and because Trace is getting married, Trace ends up matchmaking Trip with his bride's cousin. Trace and Chandler do not get along. These two bicker and banter constantly. They are total opposites, and usually I really like bantery kinds of romances, but this one felt a little bland to me, kind of boring. It was just a romance that didn't really leave that much of an impression on me. I read a Kristen Becca Ritchie book in October. I read Fearless Like Us, which is book nine in the Like Us series. This one sadly was just okay for me. I gave it three stars. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. This is the Thruple's second book, so we're back with Sully, Banks, and Akara. It was just a little underwhelming. Like, I'm not in love with any of these characters, so I'm not that invested with their story. And the plot here was kind of dumb. It's all about these leaks about Sully's family, her cousin's family, 
and I just really didn't care about this that much. The second generation gets hounded by paparazzi because their parents are famous and that just didn't really make sense to me. I mean I am happy that this thruple is happy but I kind of wanted a little bit more from the romance. I wanted to see it moving forward, developing a little bit more, but this book was mainly about the leak plot and also about the families finding out about this thruple. So there's not that much progression within the thruple itself. I ended up reading a paranormal romance novella called The Witch's Wolves by Ellie Mae McGregor. This one was okay. Give it three stars. The writing was okay. It's a little bit flowery for me so I didn't really get too into it but it's an MMF paranormal romance with an already established MM couple. The MM characters are also werewolves but they're not your typical typical werewolves because they look a little bit different and I couldn't really get a good grasp of what they looked like. I did like that it was a retelling of the Little Red Riding Hood and the heroine she's on the run and she comes across this couple and they end up inviting her to become a thruple. Also I'm realizing that I'm saying thruple a lot in this wrap-up. I definitely did not mean to read so many threesome romances or almost threesome romances back in October. The next book that I read was sadly a doozy. This was claimed by J.R. Ward which I gave two stars to because I did not like it. This is one of J.R. Ward's worst books ever. I think two stars is the lowest I've ever given her and that one was for another pretty recent release from last year. So she is on a roll for me. This is another two-star read, second year in a row. And this one especially is such a shame because we've been waiting so long for a werewolf romance from her. She's been teasing us for years about her werewolf characters and now that it's finally here it was a huge letdown. I did not care for this couple at all. Lydia is this scientist who's obsessed with saving these wolves and Daniel is like a new hire at the organization. But I really felt no chemistry between these to. I just was not invested at all and also for a werewolf romance we barely got any werewolves. It only happens at the very end and then there's also another reveal at the end that was so so dumb. And the worst thing is that this book ends in a cliffhanger which means we get even more about these characters that are so forgettable. I don't know if I'm gonna continue reading this series or not but probably not. I read another reverse harem romance. This one was one that a lot of people recommended to me. It's Groupie by C.M. Stunick. This one is a rock star reverse harem romance. I really liked it. I give it four stars. We have five guys and one girl in this reverse harem romance. The five guys are part of this band. They're called Beauty and Lies and they're on tour and the heroine Lilith is down on her luck. She is having a rough time after the death of her father, her boyfriend cheating on her, and her having literally no home anymore. So she's trying to make some money by selling these tickets that she has to see the band. And she goes to the Beauty and Lies concert. She goes to like the parking lot in order to sell the tickets and she ends up meeting the band instead. We have five guys, although only four of them are available. There's Paxton, Ransom, Muse, Cope, and the last one, Michael, is the only one in a relationship so he is very hands-off, at least for most of the book. All of them, even the heroine, are all very broken characters and they all deal with their pain in different ways, although of course the one thing that does connect them is sex. The band ends up bringing Lilith on tour with them and they start to all sleep around together and this is when the romance starts to develop even though they all already feel a pretty good connection with Lilith. There's some drama with Michael and his girlfriend but it's pretty obvious that Michael is supposed to be a part of this reverse harem. It's pretty horny for a rock star romance but it is so so entertaining like I could not stop reading this book and yes it does get a little bit over the top sometimes but I had a great time with it. I read When Sparks Fly by Helena Hunting which a lot of people told me was not the best but I decided to give it a try and it was okay. I give it three and a half stars and it honestly could have been a four but the hero was just so so dumb. It is a friends to lovers romance with the roommates trope. Declan and Avery have been best friends since college and they're both currently living together. Declan is your very cliched man whore who avoids commitment and it's because of a hookup that he ends up flaking on Avery. He's supposed to drive her to this event because she is terrified of driving after her parents died in a car accident. So she's forced to drive herself and she ends up getting into an accident herself and 
and Declan is all so guilty and beaten up over it, which I mean he should be. He definitely wasn't acting like a good best friend that morning. Declan ends up taking care of Avery while she recovers and they end up accidentally seeing each other naked a few times and that's when the lust starts ramping up. So Declan now has a few more duties when it comes to helping Avery out and by that I mean giving her orgasms. And I was really liking the book by this point, like minus the beginning because that was annoying. But then Declan does this 180 and he becomes this complete jerk. He really brought this book down for me like I was cringing at what he was doing at the end. It was not great. He definitely could have groveled more than he did for how he hurt Avery. I read An FF Romance, I Kissed a Girl by Jenna Alexander. This one was three stars for me. It was okay, a little bit underwhelming. I did really like the premise of this one. Like the setup was great. It's set in Hollywood. Lila, one of the heroines, is an actress and she really wants to make it big. And Noah is her newest makeup artist for this new film that she's doing. Noah already had a crush on Lila before she met her, so that part was really cute how she fangirled over her. Lila was definitely the best character for me. She's bi and closeted so she's dealing with trying to come out and also her growing feelings for Noah and all of this would have been really enjoyable but Noah is just not a likable character. She is judgy and rude to Lila for no reason that I could see. There were some good parts to this book but there was also the parts with Noah that I did not find fun to read so sadly I just didn't get into this one as much as I wanted to. I read another duet last month because you guessed it my library got the audiobooks. It was the Torn and Bound duet by Nikki Ash and Kay Webster. It's a polyamorous romance not a reverse harem. It's a polyamorous romance with three guys and one girl. It's new adult. It's in college. We have Ashton who is the Dean's son and he is also gay. He's best friends with Mia, our heroine, who is secretly in love with her gay best friend. Ashton is forced to have a new roommate, Drew, our other hero, who also happens to be the school's new hockey coach and he is also the guy that Mia made out with the other night at a party. And then there's Brayden, who is the jock. He's a hockey player and he has a past with Drew. They used to be best friends until Drew ghosted Brayden, so now he hates Drew. So all four of these characters are very much intertwined and they are very very messy. One thing you might be wondering about is Ashton being gay and it turns out that he is not quite as gay as he thought he was because he's been feeling some lust for his girl best friend. All four of them are into each other and it takes them forever to realize that they're into each other and that a relationship, a four-way relationship, could be possible. But I was so entertained by this one. I really liked it. I give it four stars. I could not put this one down so I had to immediately pick up the sequel once I finished it. Book two is called Bound Together which I sadly didn't love quite as much. I gave this one three stars. I mainly didn't like this one as much because Ashton's character got on my nerves so so much in the sequel. He started to become all whiny and selfish and unlikable and by this point I honestly would have been happy if we got a throuple instead if Mia, Drew, and Brayden ended up together without Ashton. That would have been totally fine with me. But at least the sequel does have a really nice ending for this poly romance. I mean, even though I didn't love book two quite as much, overall the duet was still pretty good. I read one of my most anticipated reads of the month, which was The Temptation by Nikki Sloan. If you've watched some of my videos, you might know how much I have been loving Nikki Sloan this year. I read her Filthy Rich American series and loved it. And we finally get the fifth book we get Vance's book. The Temptation was so good. I adored it. I give it four stars. It is very different from the rest of the series. It's not as angsty or intense. Vance is such a sweet hero and his romance, his friends to lovers fake dating romance is so sweet. It's still hot since it is Nikki Sloan but definitely some different vibes from the rest of the series. I still had a wonderful time reading it though. Like I loved Vance. Emery was so amazing. Like I loved her job. She hacks open safes for a living. Like people pay her to do that. It's legitimate. Though she does have like a side job or she used to do some pickpocketing before she got this new job. So these two meet because of a mutual friend who has recently just disappeared and been claimed dead and they want answers. The two of them come up with this little scheme to pretend to date and then both of them will go to this party that's hosted by their friend's father and they'll try to 
hack open his safe. The whole heist part was really exciting, very unexpected, but the romance itself was so sweet. I really like these two. It's almost slow burn. Again, they become friends first before anything else, but I just really like this one. I also read The Highland Fling by Megan Quinn, which I gave three and a half stars to. It was very close to four. I was really liking it, but the ending, um, it kind of sucked. So I love Highlander romances. I love Highlander historical romances, and I don't really come across too many that are modern day Highlander romances, but this one is it. So I was really looking forward to it. Bonnie and her best friend go to Scotland. They go to the Highlands. They kind of get a little lost, and then they come across this abandoned coffee shop, and Bonnie decides to take it over. Her hero is Rowan, who is this gigantic grumpy Scot. They don't get along, and I was really enjoying the romance here. I love the grumpy sunshine trope. They were really fun together. And then the ending happened that brought this book down for me because Rowan does something that I got so mad about. Like this guy was so annoying. The way that Rowan acted just took me completely out of the story. And I know I say this all the time, but Rowan definitely needed to grovel more than he did because he really hurt Bonnie. I read a debut author next, Denise Williams, How to Fail at Flirting, which I adored. I gave it four stars. I honestly can't believe that I haven't read this one sooner. It was so, so good. I really liked how well-rounded this book was. I will say though, this book is absolutely not a rom-com, even though the cover and the title look very cute. It's not. It deals with some really heavy subjects like abuse, domestic violence, gaslighting, and there is assault too. So Naya is this professor who is trying to move on from her previous abusive relationship. She's trying to move on with her life and she creates this list of things to do in order to reclaim herself. And at a bar she meets Jake, our hero, our very sweet hero, who offers to help her out with that list. Jake and Naya are just so adorable together. I really felt their connection from the beginning of the book. The romance is slow moving, slow paced with Naya being a little hesitant to, you know, get back into a relationship, but it's so, so heartwarming. I love seeing Naya reclaim herself, be happy again, and part of the book does have her confronting her abuser, and I was just feeling all the anxiety for Naya. That part was intense and emotional, but really well written, and I just really liked Naya and Jake and their romance. My next book was Shame by Fiona Cole, which I gave three and a half stars to. This is another book that was very, very close to four, but there were just some things that brought it down a little bit for me. I really liked the writing here and I was glued to the pages. Like I could not stop reading this one, but the heroine was really, really frustrating here. This book is split up into three parts. Part one is my favorite when our main characters first meet and fall in love. Anna and Kevin first meet as teenagers. They're both in high school. Anna's the one who moves in right next door to Kevin and they become best friends. Nothing really romantic happens just yet, but both of them individually are slowly realizing that they have some kinkier tastes when it comes to sex. Like Kevin is realizing that he may be a dominant. He wants to dominate his woman and Anna is realizing that she wants to be a submissive. They are both really ashamed of this kink, like they're terrified of anyone finding out about it, but eventually they do find relief with each other. I will admit I wasn't really too understanding of why they were both so ashamed when they didn't grow up in any sort of conservative environment. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like both of them just could have Google stuff to learn more about this kink and make themselves feel more safe about it, but that would just obviously ruin the plot. But at the end of part one, Anna and Kevin are both torn apart. Kevin does something to hurt Anna and neither of them see each other for years until they finally reunite. They're both in college by this point and Kevin is a lot more comfortable with his kinks, but Anna is not. She wants a quote-unquote normal life with a normal guy. Parts two and three were really frustrating to read because it almost felt like Anna was stringing Kevin along. Like you could totally tell how in love these two are, but Anna is just so against being kinky or just being submissive. She just believes that she needs to be with a regular guy and not explore kinks and then everything will be fine. Still, I did really like the story. I did like the book. It was a really great friends to lovers romance, but it just wasn't quite perfect enough for me. My next book was a pretty big disappointment. I read Bad Alpha by Catherine Moon and I sadly give it two stars. I'm so, so sad. I didn't love this one. I really liked her other two books in this Reverse Harem Omegaverse series, Lola 
and The Billionaires Part 1 and 2. So those two were great and I was really looking forward to this third book, but I literally felt zero chemistry or romance between the characters. Like I liked Eve, our killer heroine, our alpha killer heroine. She kind of gets tricked by the Omega hero into bonding with him, into biting him, and now they are a pack. And because of Adam, she ends up finding three other alphas to bond with him and then eventually her. There's also a whole plot with Adam's sister being kidnapped and everyone trying to find them and also stopping this evil human trafficking organization, but that part was really long-winded. I really was not invested in that whole suspenseful part either, but I just could not get behind this romance. I felt nothing between any of the alphas, like especially the three alphas. Garrett, Jamie, and Rory are three friends, and now they're kind of forced to be a pack with Adam, but I just didn't feel the romance here. I didn't believe it. Like, I did not believe the love between these guys and Adam and Eve. If all all five of these characters remain friends at the end of this book, I would have been totally fine with it. So for romance, it was a total fail for me and I can't really give this one more than two stars and plus it was really long. I think it was about 500 pages and I don't think it needed to be. I read a high school new adult romance next. I know what is going on with me. I don't really read high school, but my library got the next book in the Callahan series, so I figured why not? Let's just complete the series. So I read Meant to Be by Monica Murphy, which I gave three stars to. It's the only book that you can't read as a standalone in the series because it is a follow-up, a sequel to the previous book and the previous couple. So we're back with Ava and Eli. There's is very much a star-crossed lovers kind of romance because Eli is Ava's older brother's enemy. So in the second book, Eli and Ava are still trying to make things work, trying to prove to everyone that they are meant to be. I sadly though wasn't really feeling this one, mainly because of Eli's character and how hypocritical he was. Like he would get mad at Ava for doing something or not doing something and then he would do the exact same thing to her later on in the book. And he was also just really easily butthurt about everything. He was just not happy unless he was having sex with Ava and that got pretty tiring to read after a while. But I just found out that this couple is getting another book. They're getting a third book but it's now set in college and they are still not that certain about their relationship because they've been doing long distance in college. But yeah, I mean if you love teenage angst in your books you might like this one a lot more than me. I read one of my most anticipated reads of the year, Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I was so excited to read this one especially after how much I love House in the Cerulean Sea last year. I love this one. I mean, I had no doubts that I would. I usually love TJ Klune, but I'm giving this one four and a half stars just because I didn't love it quite as much as Cerulean Sea, but it's still amazing. It's like this fantasy, this contemporary fantasy where a guy named Wallace, who is not the most likable character, he is an asshole. He ends up dying, he becomes a ghost, and he realizes that he lived a pretty bad life where he did not really care about anything, so nobody cared about him. This book is mainly his transformation about learning to care about someone besides himself, learning how to love, and finding his own family. Like finding his own found family, which TJ Klune is always so good at writing. So now that Wallace is a ghost, he's taken by a reaper to this coffee shop where the ferryman lives. The ferryman is her love interest. His name is Hugo, and he is a total sweetheart. He's the one who helps souls cross crossover and Wallace is supposed to cross over but he really wants to stay and he's given one more week to kind of live, but live as a ghost. We have this fantastic cast of characters here. It's not quite as big as House in the Cerulean Sea, but it's still so wonderful and lovely to read. We have the Reaper who helped Wallace at the beginning of the book. She is hilarious, and Hugo's grandfather and even his dog are so adorable. This book is also so funny. I mean, as heart-wrenching and emotional as it gets, it's also so funny. This book made me laugh out loud several times. Like the whole Ouija board scene, that happened me dying, but overall it was a wonderful read. I had an amazing time with this book. I read another fantastic book next. This is The Marriage Game by Sarah Desai. I gave this one four stars. It's a South Asian romance that I had a fantastic time reading. I don't know why I didn't really expect to enjoy this one as much as I did, probably because the reviews on Goodreads are not the best, but I really like this one. I love the banter. I love the chemistry. It was just so much fun to read. We have our heroine Layla who moves back home after 
after losing her job and breaking up with her boyfriend. She wants to start her own company where she helps people try to find a job. Her parents offer her the place above the restaurant as her new office, but it turns out that her dad has already rented it out to someone else. Sam is the one who rented out the space and he is a co-owner of a company who helps other companies fire people. Sam and Layla are complete opposites and they do not like each other. First, because they're both trying to take this space for themselves. And second, both of their respective jobs just go completely against each other. There's so much good tension and fire between these two from the moment that they meet. Like I was dying over their banter. It was funny and silly how crazy these two just drove each other. There's also this hilarious plot where Layla's father, who is adorable, he puts out this marriage resume for Layla in order to find her a prospective husband. So we have all these random guys showing up at the office trying to woo Layla and Sam just makes things so awkward in the most entertaining way because he's trying to kind of scare off these guys but then they do make a deal with each other. They have this little game where if Sam can find an actual good prospective husband for Layla she will give the office to him. I really like this one. I had a lot of fun with it. I mean I can see why people well, I did not like this book. A lot of people complained about Sam, which I can see, but I still really liked both of these two because of the way they were with each other. I ended October with some spookier reads. I read a gothic romance and two monster romances. The gothic romance was Gothicana by Rue Nix, which was my book club's read for October. I really like this one, although I'm still hesitant between three and a half to four stars, just because we don't really get all the answers from this book. We're left open-ended with several plot points and I can't say that I'm a fan of that, but I did really like this book overall, mainly because the gothic vibes were so, so good. It's a forbidden romance between a professor and a student, although it's not too big of an age gap just because Corvina is 21 and Vad is 27. He's like a teacher student, but still any fraternization is forbidden. So Corvina starts college a little bit late. She has been homeschooled her whole life by her schizophrenic mother. She's a really interesting character and from the moment that she meets Vad, her professor, there are some intense sparks flying. It's the first time that she's ever felt any lust for a guy and like this is some serious lust and it does go both ways. It is very much insta-lust which I don't really mind. I kind of love it and I mean this is almost almost paranormal I want to say. It's not really but it could be and I don't mind insta-love when it comes to you know non-contemporary stuff. So the romance it does happen really fast. It is very steamy but I also loved the whole setting of this college. It's really spooky and creepy and haunted. Like every few years at this school some students end up disappearing and never heard from again and one of the last few students actually died. So there's a whole history with that plot that we sadly don't get all the answers to but overall it was a really entertaining book and I was very hooked onto the story. I had to read The New Siam Nascosta. This one is The Maven Feast which is another monster romance from her. It's a monster romance novella but sadly I didn't love this one quite as much as her other one as much as Morning Glory Milking Farm. I gave this one three stars. It's basically a spider monster romance. The hero is a gigantic spider monster and surprisingly this is not the first time that I read this kind of hero so it wasn't too weird for me but I just couldn't really get into the writing here. It kind of felt like we were plopped into the middle of a story and things were explained a little bit weirdly and I just couldn't get a grasp of what the situation was for the heroine like she was kicked out of her witch coven and now she's living on her own. The explanation for that was a little convoluted but at least the romance was kind of cute. I wasn't that in love with it but it wasn't too bad either. So Ladybug, the witch heroine, she rents out her attic to the spider monster hero and things don't really happen at all. They don't really act too much at first but they do end up giving each other gifts and just exchanging things but they never really talk too much. So it's kind of slow burn like her other book but I wasn't really feeling it here this time. I just sadly never got a good grasp of these characters but apparently we are getting more from this couple so hopefully that will be a little bit better. And then the last book that I read in October was a monster romance Monsters Under My Bed by MJ Marstons. It's a reverse 
reverse harem monster romance. I gave it some three and a half stars. It was surprisingly a lot more plot than I expected. The writing could have been a little bit better, like she could have used another editor and less exclamation points, but the story itself was really interesting. The heroine Alexis grew up with monsters under her bed, literally. These three monsters used to come into contact with her while she was growing up, and then when she turned 18, things started to turn a little bit lusty. But then something happened that caused her to run away and never come back home for about a decade. She does finally come back home when she finds out that her dad has been injured, so she wants to take care of him. Though I will say she was not the best daughter, but whatever, I'm here for the monster romance, right? So I really liked our monsters here, our monster heroes. They are actually a part of this other world, this other world full of monsters and this king monster is trying to destroy them and now they're trying to take them down so there's this whole plot with that some action involved but there's just a lot going on in this book that i did not expect but i still enjoyed myself with it surprisingly there wasn't too much steam here i definitely expected more of it but i liked our heroes the heroine was okay and i am intrigued enough to continue with the rest of the series but that is it for this wrap up for october let me know your thoughts if you read any of these books links to everything will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!